Okay. Mm. Let me come to uh, Mr. Gumado, yes. who is a legal practitioner. Very well. Um, like I said earlier, the worry of Nigerians now is their protection should they blow the whistle. From this um, act, is it an act? No, it's a policy. It's, a policy. it's just a policy, okay. Um, how much protection do you see that the Nigerian has in that policy? Can he um, have enough confidence to blow the whistle based on your reading and understanding of that policy? Okay. Um, please let me also be indulged to you know, make preliminary remarks like my colleagues. Um, I appreciate the reservations Mr. Oka has, and I'm happy that he said he's confused, meaning if there are better clarifications, he could affirm that this is a good policy. Otherwise, he would stand by his fears and then continue to enlighten the people along the lines of his conviction. But I'm, I'm particularly delighted that just a policy without arrests, without prosecution, has yielded in terms of recovery the amount that so far have been documented. Um, our cynicisms are founded in this country because we've had sufficient grounds to be cynical. That when ideas and policies that has the capacity to turn around a situation emerge, uh, as people who have the privilege to enlighten the public, we need to guard it jealously. So, and this is not peculiar to Nigeria. As a matter of fact, international organizations have adopted this. And that's why I like uh, the perspective that Mr. Osita has taken. Only on the 23rd of January this year, the new Secretary General of the United Nations adopted or signed what you could call this 20th Whistleblowers Protection Policy. The Whistleblowers Protection Policy was uh, initially adopted by Kofi Annan in 2005, you know, in the wake, in the wake of the oil for food scandal, if you remember. And what was it meant for? It was to protect those who have better information on getting to the root of what happened against any form of retaliation. And that takes me back to your question. That the argument at the moment is that can we leave this policy at the level of policy? Am I protected, ma'am? Can we leave it at the level of policy or upgrade it and develop robust legal framework to deal with the exigencies of the moment and handle the questions of this protection as you talk about. As a policy, the target is to get as much result as possible within the context of our situation. But in doing that, deliberate efforts in all whistleblowing regulations, policies, and acts that I know you have the crucial component of protection of both the information and the informant. And this cannot be an exception. Indeed, the much I have gathered speaks directly to those protections that you and I are bothered about, not just of the informant, but of the information. But you know, we are in a wonderful country one that is prone to abuse of every and any policy, however lofty. And therefore, the question agitating people's mind is not whether we have succeeded in recovering 94, all this whooping amount that you mentioned. 
The question is, to what extent can this policy become another subject of abuse? And i give you a practical example. The DSS, for instance, no less other law enforcement agencies, under the extant laws establishing them, are sufficiently empowered and mobilized to blow the, I mean, to get much more than a whistleblower. But here we are, unable to deliver on our core mandate, which is even why you have the DSS. All of these things are Nigerian police force. The, D the, SSS, the DSS used to be a department in the Nigerian police force. But as we, as we grow and get sophisticated in our, in our misadventure, uh, uh, leadership you know, take positions and policies to respond to those failures. And I'm going to give you a scenario that, you know, easily bothered the mind of every person. Assuming a DSS or a Nigerian police officer who is mandated by the law creating it, or that office, will be able to pass on certain information that could lead to investigation and culminate in prosecution and conviction, decides to be better motivated by the percentage that can accrue from a 19, uh, 94 point something million dollars and decides to conscript either his younger brother, a girlfriend or an associate to go to a particular office and disclose what he knows. These are possibilities Indeed. that are very, very uh, imaginable. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I think that has given rise to the agitation that, look, we shouldn't leave it at the discretion of our leaders, of our policy makers. There must be a robust legal mechanism or framework that we deal with all sides of this agenda. Okay, in this case here, <coughs> let's come back to the social side. In this case where government is a government policy yeah. and it's seemingly yielding results, but someone is even tweeting, and aid to the president is saying that Nigerians require incentives to be patriotic. Wow. But now, the whistleblowing policy is put out by government and there's an incentive there for those who blew the whistle. Is it true that that incentive needed to be there for Nigerians to tell when someone is corrupt? That, that, that is an indictment on its own for us to want an incentive to do something for our own good. It's an indictment. It tells you clearly, I mentioned here, trust deficit. We have heard from one great senator that there are two types of sprays that are used for fighting corruption. One is a disinfectant, the other one is a deodorant. Now, what if I'm blowing a whistle against somebody that qualifies for deodorant? What's going to happen to me? 